Today we're going to talk about methenolone acetate, colloquially known as oral primo, but technically known as primobol. We're going to break this video up into three parts. Part one is going to be the history and potential benefits of this medication. Part two is going to be the potential drawbacks. And then part three is going to be best practices. Namely, if you're using this medication, some of the things you can do to hopefully maximize the benefits and minimize the potential drawbacks. But first and foremost, as always, quick disclaimer, this is not medical advice. This should not be used to stand in the place of medical advice. This should not be used to treat or diagnose any medical conditions. This is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Now let's get into part one, the history and benefits of oral primo. Methenolone acetate has been around for over 60 years. It was originally developed by Squibb Pharmaceuticals who originally called it Nibble, and then the injectable version was Nibble Depot. It was sold to another pharmacy company who came up with the name Primabolin, that's what we're talking about now, methenolone acetate, or Primabolin Depot, which is the injectable version, methenolone enanthate. Now, it was developed for the same reason that a lot of anabolic androgenic steroids were developed, namely to try to get all the benefits of testosterone while minimizing the potential side effects. Don't we all want that? Uh, we'll get into the drawbacks in, in the next part, but let's talk about the benefits. It is a derivative of a derivative of testosterone. So for a lot of these or all of these anabolic androgenic steroids, you got testosterone at the top. Testosterone can 5-alpha reduce into dihydrotestosterone. And dihydrotestosterone is where this medication is a derivative from. So much like Anavar, which is a derivative of DHT, it has some special properties that are similar to Anavar, but also outside of Anavar. If you're interested in that, I did a video, I'll link that at the very end. Let's talk about what this DHT derivative doesn't do and then what it does do. So since it's a DHT derivative, it does not convert into estradiol. So from a cosmetic perspective, let's say it's a bodybuilder getting ready for a bodybuilding show. He wants to drive down his estradiol as far as possible. Let's say he pulled his testosterone out, but he still wants to maintain some level of anabolism to try to maintain as much lean tissue as possible going into his bodybuilding show. This is where things like uh, monoprimobolin, might make sense on top of probably a lot of other drying agents, but you're going to get that increase in anabolism because it is, it does bind to the androgen receptor without increasing estradiol. But this is what's unique about this medication, and I have some blood work to show. Not only does it not convert into estradiol, but it also lowers estradiol without, even if you're on testosterone. And so we're gonna look at this gentleman's blood work. This is a guy that he does TRT, but he also does a little more than TRT, which is totally fine. I'm not here to judge you, but we're going to take a look at his blood work. So pre-methenolone acetate, what I want you to pay attention to is the estradiol. So estradiol is high. It's at 54. Now his testosterone was super high too. So I'm of the opinion that if your testosterone is very high, it's not a big deal if your estradiol is very high but you can see his estradiol is 54. And this was on 300 milligrams of testosterone a week, plus 50 milligrams of Anavar every single day. What happened when he added oral primo, methenolone acetate? Take a look at the estradiol, dropped down to 18. So it went from 54 to 18. What was the difference? 50 milligrams of the oral primo every single day. So not only does it not convert, but it also lowers circulating estradiol. Why is that? I don't think anybody can say definitively. Some people say that it acts as an aromatase inhibitor, so it's actually interacting with the aromatase enzyme. Other people say that since it's interacting with the liver, it changes the hepatocytes, so there's less testosterone into estradiol. There's a bunch of different theories. I can't find any definitive evidence on why it happens. I can just show that it does happen. And this is an N of one, but we see this all the time. And if you go into the forums, a lot of people report the same thing, namely Primo lowering their estradiol. So that's the first benefit. No conversion into estrogen. And from a, let's say a therapeutic perspective, I could see how somebody could use this in a therapeutic sense. Let's say somebody is, um, I don't know, sensitive to an astrazole, which is a typical AI but they're not as sensitive to uh, Primo, oral Primo. Yeah, maybe this could be used in a therapeutic setting. That's a bit of a stretch, but I could see why it could potentially be used. Now let's look into some actual clinical evidence. So this, like I said, this medication has been around since the 60s. So I wanted to find something a little more recent, something a little closer to home. So I actually did find a study, it was published the 15th of April, 2024. 
The article's title is Attenuation of Bone Mineral Density Decline During Anemia Treated with Methanolone Acetate and Myelodysplatic Syndrome. This person was suffering from anemia from myelodysplatic syndrome, and they tried to slow the rate at which his bones were, his bone mineral density was, was going down with methanolone acetate. This guy was 73 years old. Again, this is a case study. This is an N of one. This dude was 73 years old, and they gave him 20 milligrams of methanolone acetate a day, so a very low dose. And looking at the results, I thought this was interesting. This is right from the results. No new onset fractures were detected during the treatment period. No alterations in other medications or the occurrence of side effects, such as elevated prostate-specific antigen levels and liver dysfunction due to methanolone acetate administration were observed. So even though this is a DHT derivative and androgens can agonize the prostate, we didn't see an increase in PSA. Since it's an oral anabolic steroid, you would think that it could hurt the liver. We're gonna get into this in, in the next section, but at 20 milligrams a day in this specific person, at this specific time, we did not see an elevation in liver enzymes that are indicative of liver damage. So not only is it good for preventing fractures, at least in this case, it also doesn't seem to agonize the prostate and it also doesn't seem to damage the liver, again, in this specific case. So let's go over the benefits real quick. Number one, it does not convert into estradiol, which could be good for people who are getting for a specific cosmetic event. Number two, it lowers estradiol, which could be beneficial in a therapeutic setting for somebody sensitive to something more traditional like an astrozole. Number three, it doesn't seem to agonize the prostate and probably has a low androgenic side effect profile for things like BPH or hair loss. And then lastly, it also doesn't seem to damage the liver despite being an oral anabolic steroid. And again, this isn't super deep research. Again, this is one guy at one specific dose, but I do think there's good evidence to argue for those four points. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, it never is. So let's get into the drawbacks right now. Part two, the drawbacks of methanolone acetate. One of the benefits is also one of the drawbacks. So lowering estradiol may have benefits in certain cases. It also has drawbacks in other cases, especially if you keep your estradiol bottom of the range or even lower for a long period of time. So estradiol in the male body is very important for things like eye health. It's important for sexual function. Long term, it's also important for bone health. It's also important for brain health. So estradiol should be maintained in a certain range, usually in the range we like to see at a certain, let's say 120th to 125th testosterone. We'll talk about that at a different video, but you want to have a certain amount of estradiol in your body. And if you're crashing it down to virtually nothing long term, that will impact your health in a negative way. Number two, it's still an androgen. I get it. It's a weak androgen, but is it weak just because of its chemical makeup or is it also weak because of the dose that we've seen in the clinical setting? So that case study that we looked at was 20 milligrams a day. Not very high. Most people that do this medication are doing 100 milligrams a day, and they're doing it for a very specific purpose, like a competition prep. What happens if you take something that's a weak androgen, but you 5X the dose? Now, yes, it might still be a weak androgen, but you've increased the androgen load on mass. So what's gonna happen? You can still deal with androgenic side effects like hair loss or damaging your prostate. And then lastly, it is still an oral anabolic agent. Yes, again, the clinical evidence shows that it's very well tolerated by the liver, but what if you 5X the dose, which most people are doing? I imagine you will eventually start to tax your liver that will start to show up in blood work. So real quick, those are the drawbacks as I see it. Number one, it can lower estradiol, maybe too much and for too long. Number two, it's still an androgen, which can lead to hair loss and prostate ag aggravation. And then number three, it's an oral anabolic steroid. Do that at a high enough dose for a long enough time, I can see how it could hurt it. And again, that's just my opinion. Now we're gonna get into part three, best practices if you're gonna take methanolone acetate. Before we get into best practices, I do have to hit a shameless plug. My name is Alex Wallace. I'm the owner of Steel Health and Hormone Center. We are the white glove approach to hormone replacement therapy. So look, let's say you're watching this video and you're tired of managing yourself. You're ordering stuff online and you're like, is this thing contaminated? Is it dosed appropriately? I don't wanna be judged, so I'm just gonna keep doing this. 
We help guys like that all the time. So if you're trying to go from the dark side to the light side, you're trying to go from just blasting random stuff on the internet to really getting the white glove approach to testosterone replacement therapy so you can do things long-term as healthy as possible, we're here for you. Go on our website, Steel Health and Hormone Center, center spelled re.com, fill out a contact form, we'll be in touch within 24 hours. Now let's get into best practices. There's three steps. First and foremost, the poison is in the dose. This medication is shown to be very well tolerated at a very low dose, 20 milligrams a day. So if you're somebody that's trying to get maybe a little bit of increased anabolism, maybe you're trying to get a cosmetic effect in terms of just lowering some estradiol to lower the water retention, if you can get away with 20 milligrams, take 20 milligrams. Don't all of a sudden start at 100 because you read a form that, oh, if it's less than 100, it isn't gonna do anything. That's verifiably untrue. You may react different than some Reddit post says that, says that you're gonna react. So always start at the lowest effective dose and only build if you absolutely have to. That's true for all medications across the board. Number two, it is still an oral anabolic agent. That means it's gonna hit your liver. Yes, it is very well tolerated, especially compared to a lot of other oral anabolic steroids, but it still has to pass through the liver. And as a result, I think you should take some precautions to keep your liver safe. So these are two supplements that I don't sell and I am not sponsored by that I've actually seen help guys have their ALT and AST go back down. And acetylcysteine and Tudka. Yes, it's more expensive than your $15 milk thistle that you bought off of Amazon, but I can say, at least in my experience, I've seen it actually help with liver health. And then last but not least, I say this in every video, and I'm gonna say it in every video. I don't believe you should do anabolic androgenic steroids without a testosterone base, period. Plain and simple. If you're afraid of needles, stay away from all of it. Stay away from all of it, don't even do it. But I can't sit here and say in good faith, oh yeah, you can just run Oral Primo. Don't even worry about it. Because testosterone provides a lot of what the body needs. Number one, testosterone, which has a ton of metabolic uh, properties to it. And then number two, it's the perfect substrate for aromatase, which increases estradiol. Prima Bolin is already not gonna convert into estradiol and it's gonna further reduce your estradiol. We've already talked about the potential damaging effects of long-term low estradiol. So, always run your stuff with a testosterone base. Remember guys, this isn't medical advice, this is just my opinion. I'm a random guy on YouTube. If you wanna work with a doctor, go on my website. But if you've learned something in this video, do me a favor, like the video. If you're interested in content like this, don't forget to subscribe. If you wanna be a patient, if you wanna go from the dark side to the light side, go on our website, fill out a contact form, I'll talk to you very soon. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.